week. We can finally get into the arcade. I've been months collecting machines. I actually, I, you guys can't really see all of them because they're like in uh, well, two different places, well, three different places, you know? The gaming room, the garage, and they're all cramped in there. And then I have more machines in someone else's garage. Uh, yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do a storage unit. So I've been actually holding off on getting more machines because I'm finding all kinds of crazy good deals on arcade machines in Florida. And the way I usually find them is uh, like, you know, marketplace, eBay, offer up, stuff like that. Now, once we get the arcade, I'm gonna be moving everything from my garage. I have to rent another like big lift gate truck and spend the whole day moving uh, equipment. Um, some of the big machines, I might have to wait because um, the, the arcade place where I'm gonna go only has one door and I actually need a double door to get some of the big machines through there. But they had a suggestion because the, the business next door to the location that we're renting uh, has one of those big metal doors that goes up. And all, they said, all we have to do is make a hole in the wall because it's gypsum, right? We just gotta get, uh, we gotta get like a contractor to make a hole in the wall big enough so we can just put in the machines through there and then they go into our, our, into our location. But then they said that before we open, we have to close that up. So the machines will be stuck in there <laughs> unless we actually, you know, invest in a double door and they're super expensive. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just make another hole in the wall. I'm also going to take my whole streaming setup to the arcade and I'm going to be streaming from there for the, for the next, you know, couple weeks or maybe months. It depends how long it takes for the city to, uh, cause we need approval from the city and that's going to take like three months. It's a process. All right. So this is, uh, this is very nice. Shall I get it? Time. Let's see how it came out. All right. Mm. All right. So it's going to be a dream come true. I've always wondered whether I was going to get back into arcade, the arcade business. I used to be in the arcade business a long time ago, back in the day when Street Fighter II Champion Championship Edition was out, and I, I, I was addicted. Like my friends. We would go, all go and you know spend all our quarters on these machines. I'd be go, constantly going to the arcades. Those were good times, man. Um, so then one day I was at a friend's house and on the street I saw in one of the patios somebody had a whole bunch of arcade machines. And I was like, are those a bunch of arcade machines? The guy's patio? Wow. I wonder who, uh, like, I wonder who he is. Like, what, 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 ga what games he has. And then it so happens that uh, my friend, he met the guy's son and we became friends. And then through him, we, I actually, one day I met his father and I, and I was like, whoa, you got all these machines. I, went, I was at his house and he was showing me the machines and I was like, oh, you build them, you repair them. Oh, I was, I was intrigued. And he was like, you guys want to, you guys want to make some money? He says, I'm going to go on my route and you guys just count quarters. And he, he gave us a thing to, to roll the quarters and just roll them up. All right. All you're going to do is roll up quarters. All right. So we're driving and then he would drive to a location and he'd get the, the money thing out and then we'd sit there rolling quarters. 
fat, 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 fat. And then uh, we'd go to the next one. Another, he's got more machines. Okay, go to the next one. Go to the next one. Go, and I was like, oh my God, how many machines do you have? He had like hundreds of machines, at, at least I think. Um, and I was super tired at the end of the day. And then he would give me a couple rolls of the quarters. I think it's $20. Wait, is it $10 per roll? I don't remember. He just gave me a couple rolls of quarters. Um, and I was super happy. And then I was like, okay, I, I need to do this. This this looks like something that I can do. I actually wanted to build my very first Street Fighter Championship Edition because I noticed, I noticed that when you played against other people, your elbows would touch, you know, because you, you were like, you'd play like this. So I was like, aha, I got it. I'm gonna make a Street Fighter Championship Edition with a wide enough thing so that your elbows don't touch, right? So, uh, and at the time I used to make ramps, skateboard ramps. So I knew how to trace the outline and then just make, you know, and then just make it wider. So I, I, I can build ramps, I can, I can make this thing. <clears throat> and then I, 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 I talked to him, I was like, hey, listen, I, I wanna make a Street Fighter, uh, can you help me? He's like, oh yeah, it's super easy. You just gotta order a kit, a kit. Yeah, you order a kit online and then uh, it comes with the, with the PC, the marquee, the stickers, the stuff that you put on, yeah. And then uh, all you need is a transformer, power supply, and, and the cables, and it comes with schematics and everything. I was like, wow. So I ordered a kit online. Street Fighter II Championship Edition. You can't get them now. I mean, you, you can't, maybe. Like back in the day, it was super easy to get online because uh, th th those things were very common. Uh, so I think it cost me, I think, I think the kit cost me at the time maybe I don't know if it was like $1,500 or something like that for the kit. So I had a part-time job. And with the money that I made from that part-time job, and uh, uh, I, I started building it in my house. And it took me a while, but eventually I finished the cabinet and I had him come over and he checked it out. And I like I followed the schematics. I installed all the buttons. Like I, I, do, I learned how to read schematics. You know, I, I, I just kept going until I built it soldering. I learned how to solder. And then uh, when I finished the machine, uh, it worked. It was perfect. It was a Street Fighter II Championship Edition double wide, extremely wide cabinet. It didn't fit anywhere. It was too big. So then I was like, all right, now to find a location. So I, I, uh, I went and I, I, I saw someone who had a pickup. Hey man, is that your pickup truck? Dude, can I, can I uh, give you like, I don't know. I don't know at the time. I was like, can I give you uh, 30 bucks or 40 bucks? Uh, to, to rent it for the day. He's like, yeah, sure. And I paid the guy, <laughs> I paid the guy like, I don't even know how much I paid him. And he lent me his truck and I took his truck and I, and I put the machine in the back of the truck and I went driving around looking for locations. I know more or less what, where I wanted to put it. And then I was looking and I, there was a good area near where I lived. I remember, I remember it was called Borinquen Towers. It had like big, big, uh, big buildings and a shopping center, like a kind of like a shopping strip mall at the bottom. And I was looking and inside there, there was a, 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 a Chinese food place. And the Chinese food place had lots of uh, seating and it had plenty of room. It was big, big open space. And it was, they had a perfect wall to put arcade machines. So I asked, hey, can I put the arcade machine here? And the lady was like, yeah, okay. I was like, oh, cool. So I went back to the car, I unloaded the, the, the machine and I wheeled it in. At the time I was a Skycap. Well, no, no, I think I was a Skycap at the, was I a Skycap at the airport? No, not at that time. Um, okay, so I wheeled it in. I took it to, uh, I put it in the spot and then I noticed they didn't have a plug. So I was like, oh man, they don't have a plug. I gotta go buy an extension. All right, so I, I left and I went and bought an extension. When I came back, the lady came, no, 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 we don't want the machines here. No, no, the lady said I could put the machine here. No, 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 she, I'm the owner, I'm the owner. No, 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 take the machine out of here. We don't want that machine. And I was like, please, like, I just put it, I just went to go get a cable, just leave it a week. No, 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 I don't want it. No, come on, please, like, just, what What can it hurt? Just let, let it there for a week, and if you don't like it, I'll, I can take it, okay? And she was like, okay, one week. And I was like, Whew. so I plugged it in, and I left. <laughs> And then uh, I waited exactly one week. One week later, I went back to the machine and I opened it up and I took the, the quarter thing out and it went like this. It was full to the top. I was like, oh! And the lady was like, oh, so many quarters? And I was like, see? And I took it in the back 
I started rolling quarters, rolling quarters, rolling quarters, rolling quarters. I think it made, I mean, at the time, I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about like 1991, right? The machine made $400 or 500, four or 500. I think it was, and then we split it 250 each. And then the lady was like, wow, that made a lot. She was like, wow. And then she says, do you have another machine? And I really didn't have another machine, but I was like, mm -hmm. oh, cause I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get another machine. So that was a Street Fighter Championship Edition. The next machine I bought was a Mortal Kombat. I put it right next to it. So with my part-time job and the money that the machine generated, I bought another machine. And then with my part-time job and the, 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 the money that the, both those machines generated, I would buy another machine. And then I, and I found other locations. And then I, I, I was fearless. Like I, uh, I had no problem spending all the money because I knew I was gonna get my money back. It was like a guaranteed investment, you know? So that's why I liked it so much. So eventually I bought so many machines that I was able to quit my job and live off the machines. And I was able to live off, live off the machines for like three years. So for three years, all I did was once a week, go take all the quarters out. Now I had to work one day, one day a week. I would go take all the quarters out, split, do the splits, whatever, fix whatever needed to be fixed. I did it all in one day. And then I would just go to the beach for the rest of the, <laughs> for the rest of the week. I did that for three years. So you can imagine those are some of the best years of my life. You know, all my friends were jealous. They're like, oh, dude, you have all these machines. I, I was like, I'm buying another one. <laughs> and I kept putting more and more machines. And then now you may ask, wait, why did you get out of the business if it was so good? Well, I saw a trend. I saw a trend right about the time uh, PlayStation came out in Japan. PlayStation changed everything. The games were actually almost as good as the arcade games. And uh, I remember I bought one. I bought one from Japan, a Japanese version of PlayStation. I bought it and we played it. And the first game was Toshinden. I was like, oh, these games are getting good. And eventually, you know, I saw a decline in all the machines, all the arcade started to do a decline. So the revenue started going down, like a graph started going down. So in order to make more money, you had to buy more machines. So, and then it, it but it kept going down and it was a downward spiral. The arcade industry was dying and I got the tail end of it. So what I did was I bailed out. I sold my entire uh, video game route to the guy who, who uh, the guy that I learned from. I, I, you know, and I got out. When, after I got out, my friends, I had other friends that I had met that had stayed in the business. They, they were like, oh, things are so bad right now. Oh man. And then I was like, oof, I'm glad I got out. <laughs> so I already knew, uh, the, there were still arcades doing well, but there were, there were arcades that had redemption. You know what redemption is? Redemption is like, um, win a prize or get tickets. You know, you throw the skeet ball and then you get tickets and then you redeem those tickets for prizes. Those are the only things that did well. So you could have some classic games, but the classic games didn't do well. The, the money makers were the big, that's why you see them so much in the arcades nowadays. It's all, some, some arcades are just all redemption and swipe cards and, and, and stuff like that. So I said, one day I might get back into this, into this business because you know, I, I miss it. It, it was, a, I, I, it's nostalgic and I love, our, I love classic arcade games. So when I had this opportunity to make an arcade, I, I got married, uh, Sasha, Sasha's my wife. You guys have seen her on, on the live streams. I don't think, wait, she's been on, on, on IRL episodes. If you scroll back, you'll see a couple episodes where she's in. Uh, I, I, Sasha had told me, I come up with like pretty cool ideas and then she makes them happen. So I was like, I would told her about the whole idea. You know, I was like, wow, you know what? Arcades are coming back, making a comeback. I'm like, I don't understand why, but all of a sudden arcades are making a comeback. Like classic arcades, but not that you put quarters. Uh, it, the concept of getting a band and going into the arcade and all the games are on free play, you know? That concept works with a bar and, and then a mix of redemption machines and classic arcade games. And I went to, a, I, I did a lot of research. I went to a lot of different arcades all around and every single one of them was doing well. I, I was like, okay, it's the time to come back. Like if we do an arcade, it'll do well. Like, like uh, you know, I think it'll be all right. And then, you know, and then I just didn't do anything. And Sasha kept pushing it. We gotta do it, we gotta do it, we gotta do it. And then we, so we, she took me and we started looking for locations and we found a couple locations and we found a really good one, which is the one that we're, we're leasing right now. We found a really good one, but then they ghosted us. And it's like, damn it. 
So we found a second location, but it wasn't in such a good location. And they, they, they gave us a lease. The second place, they gave us a lease to sign. And then the, new, the, the old place, the reason they ghosted us was because they were trying to get a, another company in there and then they fell through. The company ghosted them. So then they came back to us and they're like, okay, we'll give it to you. And so, and they, and they agreed to what we asked for. We actually asked for six months free rent, six months free rent. That's kind of crazy. I mean, that's, that's bold to ask, right? Normally, uh, an arcade as a business, you can ask for three months free rent while you renovate and you, you know, because if not, it'd be too expensive. Most, most, uh, most places that rent out like that, they, they do give three months. So Sasha asked for six months and they said, okay, it's like 180 days. I was, I was, I was like, I can't believe that. And, but then, uh, we went to the city. Well, that's another story that we could say that for another video. The whole point is we're going to get back into the arcade business and it's happening. We signed the lease and, uh, either today or tomorrow sometime, we're going to get, um, what's called a, uh, 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 business liability insurance. We have to get that before they even give us the keys. So we're waiting on that. We're just waiting on that. So hopefully today we get a quote from a company or tomorrow. I don't know. I don't even know how much that's going to be. <laughs> but anyway, once we get that, we get the keys. And now finally I can move all those machines that I have down there. Pinball machines, arcade machines. You know how many I have now? I have more machines now than I had back in the day when I had arcade machines. When I when at the most, I think I had like 25 machines. Right now I have 25. Well, I ordered five more. I ordered, I, I have 20 and then five are on the way. I already paid for them. A company's gonna ship them. And then I have seven that don't work. So if I can get those seven to work, I found, uh, th this, here's another thing. Going to all these locations, I meet people and I, and I met someone that knows a mechanic that fixes everything. He says, this guy fixes everything. You just call him and he, he has good prices. I was like, oh, yes. You mean he'll go to every machine and tell me what's wrong with it. What do I need to buy? Okay, yeah, let's do that. I have seven machines. I'm going to line them up. Okay, all those are broken. Fix them. <laughs> ah, so yeah, very excited. Very excited. Uh, just so you know, the, okay, the whole concept of the arcade is going to be kind of like the, the previous experience that I had with the gaming houses. I had, I have, I've had three gaming houses in the past. The, the, the cool thing about the gaming houses is I love like when people go into the gaming house, they're like, wow, I love seeing that reaction out of people. So I try uh, to put things amazing in, in the house, like so especially with the, with the design, the art, all that stuff. So in the arcade, we're going to have classic arcade games, the modern ones, Japanese, uh, you can Google it. It's called Waka, W-A-C-C-A. -C -C -A. Google it right now on YouTube, Waka. I'm getting one Waka. Uh, so classic, the dance games, I want to get dance stardom. Uh, there's another one, which is the dance. Is it, the, it's the one that dance where you press the buttons with your, with your feet and then people hold a little bar in the back. I know that one's popular, but dude, those are so expensive. But the one I really want is dance stardom because that the floor lights up. It looks really cool. And then we're going to have PCs. So I'm gonna have at least three PCs. Uh, my goal is to have like five PCs so people can do uh, PC if they want to. Ugh. Uh, some of the big machines. Another big machine that I'm getting, um, I'm, I'm already seeing if I can order it. Uh, finance this one because it's too expensive. It's called uh, Axe Master Arcade. Google it right now, Axe Master Arcade. Trust me, you're gonna go like this. He's gonna have that? Axe Master Arcade. Another one is uh, Connect for Hoops. I'm getting that one too. And then uh, I'm also gonna have interactive floors, interactive walls, neon everywhere. Uh, with the, I'm, I'm gonna try to get the carpeting. The thing is, the, the space that we have is 6,000 square feet. So we have tons of space. And then everything's gonna be decorated. It's gonna be really nice. I'm super excited. Oh, and uh, Sasha wanted to have things for kids. So I actually have a lot of games like the whack-a-mole and I have other games, you know, that are for kids. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna have like a section like that. So very excited. Yeah, it's happening. Once we get in there, I'm gonna be doing tons more content on this channel and uh, I'm gonna be streaming from there. I'm actually gonna move my entire streaming setup there while we're getting set up because it's gonna take three months before we get 
uh, permission from the city. It, that, it takes time. So it's, for three months, I'm going to be streaming from there and you know, streaming the repairing and fixing and, and, and so you guys can see the process of, of making the arcade. Ah, there we go. Ah, cheers. Ah, ah. So if you want to see more, uh, go to twitch.tv slash Swifty. We'll see you guys in the next one.